Hi, my name is Lisa Dunn. I'm Head of Special Collections and Archives at the Colorado School of Mines Library. And today we're going to talk about mining history and images with a focus on the CMA and Gilman Digital Photos Projects. This is Part 1, Colorado Mining Association Images, that's the CMA. So what I'd like to do is showcase the Colorado Mining Association Photos Collection, and in Part 2 we'll showcase the Gilman New Jersey Zinc Company Photos Collection. And on the way, we'll talk about creating digital archives in terms of accessibility, preservation, and purpose. And this is a picture of me, Sans Mask. Um, I gave this talk originally to the Denver Mining Club in 2020, and so this is what I look like without a mask. So your personal photos. First of all, uh, when you have personal photos and you share them out, you typically share them out selectively with your family, with your um, sports team, with your organization because you share a personal interest in these photos. There are also very few intellectual property issues under consideration. Um, you're sharing them out willingly to others. They will be unlikely to be shared out further than your group in, in most cases. And, and people generally aren't concerned about who took the photo and who owned the photo specifically. These photos are not persistent in, in general, and by persistent I mean they usually are out there for days to maybe years, but other than that, they, they, don't, they don't persist for a longer period of time, and there's no guarantee that you'll be able to access them in, for example, a, a decade. Often they're presented on what I call ephemeral platforms. These are platforms like Facebook is one of the most popular ones to put photos on, and these platforms are usually accessed by means of someone's personal account. So if I have a personal Facebook account, for example, the photos that I put up there will be there as long as I want them to be put up. And if I stop using my account, or if you're in a, a subscribe to an, a, a service on the web um, that requires a, a regular login or a regular fee and you decide not to pay it, that platform will go away. And they're usually not backed up in a way that you'll be able to access your photos. And, and, and mostly people aren't that concerned about those. Um, these photos are not, are, are not necessarily out there forever. Um, and also in terms of metadata. Metadata is, and it's most fundamental, it's data about data. And if you think of a photograph as data, the, the, the actual physical photograph, and then the contents, what's depicted in the photograph, and then metadata would be the description of that photograph, the description of the physical item and the contents. Again, this is not something most people really are too concerned about. Uh, it's, it's, it's much more of a concern to librarians and archive folks. Uh, this is personal information, the metadata about your photo. And usually there's, there's context amongst your group. You know, maybe all of your family can recognize Uncle Jack on a pony. Uh, and so, so in your in your personal group, in the group you choose to share your photos with, they have you have a shared context in, in, in a lot of ways. Outside your group, there's a lack of context, and people aren't generally going to be too concerned or, or care too much about seeing a photo of someone that they don't know. They don't know when it was taken, why it was taken. They don't know the location, um, and and so that's that's kind of the the personal photo story. So digital archives photo collections are different. First of all, we typically have a mandate of some sort to make them openly accessible, or that's, that's part of our mission. Our intent is that these photos will be available to, to people around the world, actually, and, and we're expecting them to have a, there to be a wider interest in these photos, that people will, will want to look at these photos and beyond our, just our institution or our local geographic area. Uh, because we are aiming for open accessibility, we do have some intellectual property issues. This isn't just a local distribution, this is, this is a much larger distribution, so we typically seek permissions from a donor or a creator. Uh, if you've ever donated anything to our archives and special collections, we have a gift agreement form that uh, one of the things that it outlines are the permissions that we're, we're, we're asking for, our intellectual property permissions, to use these images. While the creator or donor might retain the copyright to the image, for example, we are asking for pretty much a blanket permission to be able to share, distribute, and use these images in a non-commercial manner to improve that open accessibility. Our photos 
at least we want them to be more persistent than, than photos, for example, on Facebook. We're aiming for decades and longer. I, I'm personally going for 100 years or more, and, and so we'll see how that works. Uh, because of this, we pick platforms that are reliable at, at an institutional level, that there is an institutional subscription, for example, rather than um, a, a subscription that depends on one person to maintain. These platforms are designed to hold collections like these, and they're also designed to let us migrate our content from the existing platform to a new platform if something happens, if we, if we change, decide to change platforms, for example. And this data that's migrated includes metadata. Now, our metadata is, is usually more complex and, and, and full of more knowledge and information than my personal photos because we're putting together context for a wider audience who may not know the significance of where these photos came from or what they're actually depicting. And so our metadata tends to be uh, more elaborate. We also have rules, we follow the rules. Metadata has all sorts of best practices and rules. If you think of metadata like coding, for example, you, you need to present it in a certain format. And ideally you want the metadata to be consistent uh, over within a collection and over multiple collections. So I want to talk a little bit about digital projects because uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about digital projects for, for archives and special collections, again, based on uh, what we do with our personal photos. So step one, we document. We describe the collection as a whole, and then we inventory and describe each of the items in the collection. And I'm talking specifically about photograph projects in this case. And so each item will have its own description, its own metadata. And where necessary, we do historical research. And it's often necessary for us to do historical research to try to uh, narrow down uh, the, the geographic location or the time frame for our, our photos. Step two, care for the physical items. If we have physical items uh, that are donated to us, we do a preservation assessment. We do things like repair and cleaning. Um, some of the th things we get are not in good shape uh, due to you know, various reasons. And then we house our, our photographs in archival quality envelopes and boxes, acid-free, so that they can react as little as possible with their environment in which they're stored. So step three, so this is the one that people think of. This is when we digitize things. Okay, first of all, we identify the formats, whether they're a photographic print, a negative, a 35 millimeter transparency. Um, we set up workflows according to the hardware that we need for those formats and, and the scan technicians we have. Our hardware consists of, we have several scanners, one a, a larger tabletop scanner and one a large format freestanding scanner. And our scan technicians are, are um, our student employees. We are a very small shop. I have a digital lab manager who specializes in, in, in digitization and she uh, supervises our, our student employees who do a large portion of our scanning to make things available in our digital repository. I will say we could not do the projects that we, we have done and are currently working on without our student workers. Um, we rely on them heavily and and they are very good at what they do. So then we scan things, that's the big red scan, and then we do quality control of the image to make sure it looks like the, what we want it to look like. What we want it to look like is we want it to look like specifically um, the original. We want, we want the photos to look like uh, you're holding the photo in your hands as much as we can. So here's an example of a photograph from the Colorado Mining Association collection. A number of these photographs came, uh, prints came affixed to an envelope with some content that described the photograph and then the negative is inside the envelope. And this is great. We get all sorts of good information that we wouldn't otherwise have. And so what we do though is we scan the entire thing. Okay. Um, and this way we have what looks like the original. So you know this was part of that group of photographs from the CMA collection that, that had envelopes with negatives. And what you do with this photograph once we've got it up and available in the repository, it's up to you. If you wanted to crop that out and, and enlarge the photograph, you're certainly welcome to. Uh, we've had people, you know, do color changes and things, do artistic things with our photographs, but we try to give you the original as much as we can. 
So step four in this process is metadata. Okay, this is the data about data, so the data about the photograph. We include a physical characteristics, uh, and this could include, for example, the physical dimensions of the photograph. And then we add descriptive data that will help users with both context and actually discovering the photo in our search platform. And this could include the, any labels that came with the photograph. It include a short title, a description, like a paragraph, and subject headings that uh, help people discover these photographs and, and I'll let them group them together. This can include geographic subject headings. Um, for example, if you wanted to look for the photographs of all the underground mines in Park County, Colorado in our collections, you could do that in by being aided by the descriptive data that we provide. And um, I will say that I, I did a fair amount of the descriptive data for these collections, but we have a metadata specialist who provides me with best practices and oversees the quality control of our metadata. And here you can see a screenshot of uh, a short version of the metadata for this particular photograph from the Gilman collection. Step five is ingest. And this is where we upload to our web platform the digital images and their accompanying metadata. Our current platform is Mountain Scholar Digital Collections of Colorado and Wyoming. Once we've uploaded this content, we do quality control the ingest to make sure it shows up the way we want it to and it's some, something that can be used by people who are going into Mountain Scholar. So let's talk about the Colorado Mining Association photo story. The, the, this collection is the photo archives of the association, and this is courtesy of uh, Stan Dempsey Jr. as president of the Colorado Mining Association and the association itself. The association was established in 1876 and uh, has played a kind of a central role in, in much of, of Colorado's mining history. And uh, for those people who've used the mining yearbook, which uh, was published by the Colorado Mining Association. It was established in 1933 and contains a lot of uh, very useful information. This makes this collection historically significant. This is an organization that has tracked mining in Colorado for quite some time and documented the activity of mining in Colorado. So there's about 600 images focused on the 1920s to the 1970s with the bulk of them 20s to 1950s probably, and this uh, we made this available digitally uh, on December 2019 in Mountain Scholar. So the story of the Colorado Mining Association photos is the story of the mining and minerals industries in Colorado. Okay, so let's look at some of the photos from the Colorado Mining Association. It's my favorite part. And so I picked out some of my favorites, but I will say I could probably redo this presentation with completely different photographs and they would still be my favorites. There are so many nice photos in this collection. So we have the Raleigh Mine in uh, Bonanza, Colorado, and on the right, the U.S. Vanadium Mine in Rifle in 1929. There's the Atkinson Mesa Mine, Montrose County and uh, a shot of the Timberline Dredge in Park County in 1947 with the drag line and two miners standing in front of the dredge. And this is an example, another one of those examples of a photograph, that, a print that has been affixed to the envelope with the negative inside. And most of these envelopes have very brief information. They'll give the location if known and they'll hopefully give the date if known. In this case, so we get more information. For example, Jack O'Fay and his brothers make a cleanup every day at two o'clock and get an average of about $15 gold from their placer operations. And this is a, a um, placer in California Gulch in Leadville. Uh, these are great photos because you can actually see every step of the process when you look at these photos. So here are some examples of, of, of mining conditions in general. This is the Shenandoah Dives Mine in Silverton in 31 with the mine car, the ore car. And on the right hand side are, are uh, there's a chute um, loading ore cars, but there are two uh, miners crouched on one side. And then there's a third miner standing at the chute. You can see basically his legs and boots there. Um, I, I like the men running a wheel belt in, in Lake County. They've got their old pickup truck hooked up on blocks and they are using 
it to operate some equipment on their mine site. And this is probably not too far from Leadville. Um, on the right is a miner operating a hoist. Uh, when I showed this to the Denver Mine Club folks, some of them suggested that this was probably more a horizontal hoist used to pull mine cars along the tunnel instead of a vertical hoist. But there's a signal card there for the, the hoist operator to work from. And both large and small operations, this is the Los Ochos mine, uh, which is um, a much larger operation, which I believe is a uranium vanadium mine. And uh, this, is a, uh, this is a miner just dumping an ore cart um, in an unidentified mine in Lake County, uh, which seems to me to be a very precarious position. This, this uh, miner has probably done this multiple times, but uh, this always makes me a little nervous. So uh, the, Malibd the Climax Molybdenum and Company's crushing plant, the exterior and the interior, uh, interior shots of, of, of processing equipment and underground mining equipment are, are common in this collection, which is, it is very nice to see this equipment in use. This was something that the Colorado Mining Association obviously placed an emphasis on. Here's the Climax Uranium Vanadium Mill in Grand Junction and the Durango Smelter. Uh, and you can see the iconic Durango smelter smokestack. It's this huge brick smokestack with some, some decorative brickwork. Um, and I like architectural details because this way, no matter what's going on in the photo, uh, however else it's set up, if I can identify the architectural detail, I can identify the mine or the mill, and, and it's much easier to describe the photograph from there. So some of the people in mining, uh, this is the group that worked on the Leadville Mine Dumps Project in 1942. Uh, this was sponsored by the U.S. Bureau of Mines. And um, it's always nice to have some, some actual context embedded in the photograph. These guys are grouped around uh, a plaque and a photo and a sign, a plaque and a sign, um, describing the project and, and what they were doing. This is really helpful. Uh, this other photograph, has the 75th anniversary sign in big glittery letters. And this is a mining competition that was held at the Western Mining Conference in 1972. So it's really nice to have that context in the photos. There are a couple miners from Lake County and unfortunately no date, no mine name and no ID of the miners. It's a great, great photograph. On the right hand side uh, is one of my favorites. It's Jack Carney and Harry Kitchen leaning nonchalantly uh, at an ore cart um, at their mine in the Senorita Portal in Ouray County. It's just a great photo. Here is the Camp Bird office um, for the King Lease Incorporated. This is one of the, I'm assuming it's one of the administrators. Um, he doesn't like he's dressed to be down in the mines. And, and another really nice thing about this collection is that it also includes some support services and some, some related businesses that supported mining. In this case, it's the kitchen uh, with the chef at, or I guess he'd probably want to be called the cook, at the London Mining and Milling Company. Uh, and there are other photos like this of, of wait staff and, and, and other support people. So use and impacts of this collection. Worldwide availability is something we're aiming for. We want people all over the world to be able to get access to these photos. We want to encourage reuse. We want to encourage people to download these photos and share them and use them for whatever purpose, whether it's creating a poster for your office or um, incorporating them into an academic research paper. We are supporting accessibility. There are very few people all around who can travel to Colorado, especially in these times, make an appointment with our archives and special collections and look at these photos like physically here. So we're supporting access to people who cannot visit us in person. We're also supporting accessibility for people who have barriers to uh, information and barriers to content who can use assistive technologies or can uh, pull these off of our rep repository and, and make use of them and gain as much access as possible. We definitely want to encourage their use in education and research. I mentioned incorporating these images into an academic research paper. We've had people talk about um, adding them to museum exhibits for educational purposes, um, as well as practical purposes in, in, for example, refinishing some equipment. 
that they have using our photographs. And we really want to feed people's curiosity. We want people to look through the collections and do things like imagine what it was like to be down underground in a mine, which is much easier to do when you have a picture of a photograph of a miner down in a mine doing work there. Uh, so impacts. Um, our repository Mountain Scholar actually allows us to keep track of the visitors to our collections and the number of views that we've had. The Colorado Mining Association collection, which became available in December of 2019, currently has over 38,000 views, visitors who have looked at one or more images in the collection. The Gilman Photos collection, which became available just in October 2020, so barely a month now, has over 2,800 views. And so we're counting this again. We're, we're, we're very happy to see people using our collections. So we do have support web pages for both collections, and this would be the Color Mining Association Photos Collection Guide and that address, and the Gilman Photos Collection Guide and this address. And these are places you can get a little more information. There's a brief slideshow and find out more about these collections. And the link to Mountain Scholar is also listed below. So um, I would like to thank you for watching this presentation, and I hope you will join us for part two about the Gilman Photos Collection.